Hey y'all, I'm Betsy from Happily Ever After, etc. And I am here today to share with you how to build a box. My cat is going to come help us. So I wanted to build a box. It's gonna be about three feet long by a foot wide and about a foot, foot and a half tall um, that I'm actually going to turn into a dog bowl holder kind of setup. My cat and dog are literally standing below us, <laughs> smelling each other. So when we're done, these little guys, these little guys will have a new bowl holder for their food, which they will love. So I'm going to actually use some one by fours and some plywood to build this box and my Craig jig. So if you've never used a Craig jig before, or maybe you've never seen a Craig jig before, these things are awesome. Um, I have this one, which is the K4, and I have this smaller one that's just attaches to your piece of wood. I'll show you a clip in the video. And what they do is they make pocket holes. And that means when you join two pieces of wood together, instead of having to go through the front of the board, they'll be joined from the back, goes through the wood, it's really strong, and it looks beautiful, which is the main goal. Plus, they're really easy to do. The first couple times I tried to use them, they kind of intimidated me because you have to do some measurements, but they've really made it easy, especially with the K4. They've got all the measurements on the side, and it's a lot less math in it than I thought it would be. So either way, we're gonna get started. If you want to know all of the cut lengths, or the materials that you need for this project, I will put all of that down in the description. If you need some dogs, you can get some. Don't take mine, I love them. And we're gonna get started. All right, y'all, so I am going to be making a box today with a few one by fours and some plywood. So the first thing I'm gonna do is add pocket holes. I've already drilled one just to make sure I've got everything set up properly. So there it is, one pocket hole. We're going to do that to all of our side pieces and all of our long pieces. And I will show you how to do everything. But the first thing we're going to do is set our drill bit here. So our one by fours are five eighths wide. So we're going to set our drill bit here with its collar to the five eighths. So. See how that collar is snug right up against the top of that 5 8 mark? That's what you want. If you were using a wider piece of wood, you would adjust it here. So you use your little key jig, goes right in. And then once you loosen it, you can move it up and down the collar there. So now that we've got our set, we're just going to add it to our drill. Just like you would a normal uh, normal drill bit or screw, and then we will drill our pocket holes. So let me show you the actual Craig jig. All right, y'all. So here is our Craig jig. I've got it clamped down to my little portable work table here. I just got it clamped on the end, and that is very sturdy. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our one by four. We'll put it flush here up against the mount and then we'll clamp it down here. Now this guy adjusts right here for whatever, whatever kind of wood that you have. The other thing that you'll notice is that with this Craig jig, it actually has the measurements here on the side. So if I didn't have the little one that I use, you can actually put your drill bit right here and then adjust your collar accordingly and so the collar will go right here and it'll show you exactly how tall it needs to be so if we were to put our collar right here it should be the exact same height as yep the one we did in the book so that is just another way if you have the k4 instead of our little tiny guy i don't know why i just i used the other one today so now all we'll do to do our pocket holes is drill right through these guys. I'm gonna start over here. Make sure my 
drill is going the right way. And you'll drill all the way down until it meets this collar. And then reverse out. And now we have a pocket hole. And so we're gonna actually do three on this guy. And then we'll move on. So if we wanna do one in the middle, just clamp it down. B this time. And then we'll move it over. If you have a shot back, you can attach it right here and it makes life a lot easier. I need to get one. Shot back people, if you're listening, I need a shot back, okay? all right so that is it for this piece so since we're building a box we're actually going to do that to two of our pieces of wood and we're going to leave the other two without pocket holes okay so two yes two no let's go ahead and just drill these two real quick and then I'll do the long ones. So for our long boards, these, these ones we just did are about 12 inches wide. So three holes is probably overkill. You could probably get by with just two, but I want this to be really sturdy. I'm making a dog food container, so dogs are gonna be using it. For our long boards, y'all are not gonna be able to see all of on camera. They're almost three feet wide. So we're just gonna do a hole about every six inches all the way down, okay? I'm gonna put y'all on speed up, fast forward, super fast speed. All right, y'all, so now we are going to join them together, so these are what the Craig Jig, the pocket hole screws look like when you buy them at the store. Um, these are the one inch, which I've used for a different project, but we actually need one in a quarter inch, which is just a little longer for these boards. These are from one of the Craig Jigs that I have. They come with a couple to sample and I've still got some left. So that's always awesome. I need to pick some up though, because I think I will use them all up. So, Clamp our wood together so that it doesn't move. And then you simply drill, drive the screws into place. Last but not least. And now, that should be super sturdy. Yep, you can see the pocket screws there, but from the front, you have a seamless joining that doesn't show. Now, if we actually were making something other than a box, you could use some of these little pocket hole plugs. I think I've got a couple right here. And they just, they literally fit right down in this hole so that you don't see the hole. And you can put some putty over them, paint over them, and it will be 100% seamless on the front and the back. Since we're building a box and you're not going to see the inside, we don't have to worry about that. There are the two sides of our box. One and two. They look beautiful. Now I'm going to speed through doing 
our long sides, all right? All right, for our three foot boards, we are going to use both clamps. Cause it's just a bit bigger. All right, y'all, so now we are going to attach the long sides to the short sides. So right now, this the, the long side here is clamped, the side is not, and I've got a helper. Say hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. You're Mom. All right, so I've got my giant in the camera brad nailer, and we are going to put brads in the front here, and this countersinks them so they go in. You can fill it with putty. You won't even notice when you're done. So I'm going to turn the safety off and get started. So watch your fingers when you do this because a brad to the finger would hurt a lot. Make sure you're lining it up as you go. And you're always keeping it in line with this board because if it comes out this side and not in the board, it won't help you at all. So I've put one, two, one, two in each board and now we're gonna go back in and put two more in the middle to make it extra sturdy, okay? And the reason I'm using a brad knot gun for this and not more pocket holes is because pocket holes are strongest when they go into the grain of the wood and not this way. When you put a pocket hole this way, it goes into all that wood and it can split it. So brad nails are much smaller and they will go in and grip the wood in a way that a big screw won't. So now we're gonna turn this all over. We're gonna do all the other sides, okay? Four times, four sides, it'll all be a box. Then we just have to do the top and the bottom. So here is what the brads look like. <laughs> There's my bitty. Um, once they're all together and it's all flush. So we've got, there's my tripod, a brad nailer, the power drill and my Craig jig, get all our tools. And now we have a box. So now we're gonna do the top and the bottom, paint everything, putty everything. Looking good, y'all. All right, y'all, so now I'm going to take some of this wood filler and I'm going to actually fill in all these holes so that once it's painted, you can't see them. So I'm just gonna take a little bit on my finger. I think I need to clean this out first. All right, now I've got it cleaned out. I'm just gonna take a little bit on my finger, push it into those holes until it's smooth. And then when I paint over this, you won't even be able to tell there's holes there. One side down, three more to go. Now our bottom of the box will be visible. So it needs a good two or three coats to be really white. And here are the sides. And we painted everything inside, the top, the sides. And as you can see, those joints on the side now are hardly even visible. So we are going to let everything sit. And then we'll put the bottom onto the sides using our brown nailer. All right, y'all. So now we're going to put the bottom of the box on the box. So we've just got it flipped over so that the painted side is inside. And we're just going to attach it with the brad nailer. You're probably going to want to move your thumb there. Because that would hurt. So... Just 
just want to make sure that you're going into the side of the box. And if you don't have a pack of howling dogs, you can use an app for that. We have a pack. We're going to keep going all the way around. gone every what three inches on the long sides and every two inches on the short sides and there's our box so the top is drying and then we will put it all together can't wait that went right up to our molding under a window and made the molding wider because our dog liked to sit there and just made a little ledge it makes for great storage. Um, I'm going to keep dog food in here and then have the dog food bowls on top. So it's a nice little storage piece. So if you are interested in finding out how I make the top for this guy, you can see all the pocket holes inside, then I will leave the link for that video below. I actually use the same kind of plywood same exact kind, like I cut it out of the same piece, okay? <laughs> so same plywood, but I've cut three holes out and I've covered it in resin so it looks beautiful and it's going to be the top for our little dog food stand. If you wanna watch that, I'll leave the video link below and you can check it out. Until next time, bye y'all.